this is so sweet. So this is a message from a lady that I met. She is a black American woman. She is a mother. She's a wife. And, you know, she's from New York. I'm from Boston. And typically, Bostonians and New Yorkers do not get along. And the reason is there is some ancient sports rivalry that has bled into the culture of where we're from. <laughs> and so there's just like a strange chip on the shoulder. But I'm so thankful to have met this woman. She's a doctor, actually. Um, this is a black woman, mind you. This is a black American woman, and she's a doctor. She's got her doctor. She's got her master's. I love educated women. I tell you, when you educate a woman, you really do educate a nation. And this is why education is so valuable. And this is why you should never, ever let these podcast jackasses convince you that your degree means nothing. Especially since the vast majority, the greater percentage of these podcast red pill assholes. I know I said I was going to stop cussing, but it's hard. All right. It's hard. It's hard. I'm trying. I digress. The greater percentage of these podcast YouTube red pill jerk offs have no education. We are dealing with dropouts. We are dealing with people who discovered that if they get a podcast microphone and they get a little iPhone or something and set it up on a tripod and have a little background ambiance, that they can make money just being disgusting, manipulative POS and debasing women, trashing women online because there is an entire collective and they know this there's an entire collective of them that is neither desired nor required and those people are lonely and seeking community and they know that they can tap into that self-loathing incel market nig cell market and make bank it is a multi-billion dollar industry for people to put down black women, criticize black women, dissect and dehumanize black women. The dehumanization of the black woman has always been the bread and butter of the patriarchal world. This is from when they first decided to usurp Mami Wata all the way down to right now, right here today, Halloween 2023. These fuck. Mm. I caught myself. Y'all heard it, right? Y'all heard it. So you know what word I want to use. These (laughs) jerk-offs been taken over for the 9-9 and the 2000. And there's a lot of hatred and anger toward us black women for elevating, for loving ourselves, and for going beyond what the matrix is producing for us to see. We have opted out of co-creating with the effery and have opted into co-creating with our higher self, with the most high highest, with divine creation itself to manifest the lives that we desire and not just desire, but deserve. That is what women, black women especially, have been doing. And that is why we under attack constantly. And you better believe, and this has always been true. I know we say we live in a patriarchy, but really we just live in an effed up matriarchy where women have decided to battle through their sons. And so instead of being able to have, you see this text in the back here? Instead of being able to have all this love, all this love is waiting for you on the other side of your self-loathing, self-hatred and need to compete with a woman. Your need to compete with somebody else instead of seeing that it is you versus you is how we got here. But I digress. All this love is waiting for you. All this love is waiting for you. My sis said, girl, if this wasn't happening, I'd be so with you at that. 
She's talking about the beach that we go to, the beach I introduced her to. She said, that place is so nice. It makes me feel like I'm on a vacation like the tourists. <laughs> I hope all is well on your side. Yes, so thank you for putting me on. Grateful I met you all in all. Every time I see this woman, she speaks so highly of me. And honestly, it brings a tear to my eye because I have been through some hell in trying to be in sisterhood with you bitches. And yes, I'm going to say it and I don't give a damn. I have seen some truly heinous, hateful, evil, sadistic crap from black women. And that's why I understand why your son is how he is. And we're going to call a thing a thing over here. But what has truly been my balm in Gilead? What has been the healing for my soul has been meeting other black women, accomplished black women. I told you this woman is a doctor. She's a master's educated, doctorate educated black woman. I respect this woman. I honor her and I find her to be brilliant and she, she's inspiring to me, right? But she says the same things of me and it's so beautiful to have connections to black women who love themselves so they can love you too because you can't pour from an empty cup and you cannot get blood from a rock. All this love is waiting for you on the other side of your spinelessness, your self-loathing, and your decision to compete with anything outside of you. Because in this life, and, and please enable me to wake you up. In this life, it's not you versus anybody out here. It is you versus you. Are you going to be smarter this year than you were last year? Are you going to make more money this year than you did last year? Are you going to see more manifestations of your true heart's desires this year than you did last year? Or are you going to stay stuck on the hamster wheel of self-loathing and spinelessness? Going no damn way and getting there fast. Then you mad at the next woman. Because instead of her using her P-U-S-S-Y as a cum rag, she invested in herself instead. She divested from self-sacrifice in her sexuality and instead chose herself. And because she abstained from letting any and everybody into her universe, she was able to make shit happen for her. Her discipline, her self-love, and her self-respect increased her. She was able to appreciate herself. Appreciate means to increase in value. While you sat self-sacrificing, you stopped your healing for some nigga and got paused, stuck like Mary Jo Kopechny in a certain space five years ago, six years ago, ten years ago, three months ago, however long ago. And you mad at the people around you who chose themselves. And so now you want to compete and do fuckery. This is why I do what I do as a priestess for spiritual protection. Because there are a lot of nefarious, sick people out here who would wish harm on you instead of healing themselves enough so that all this love that's waiting for you can come through. When I tell y'all opt out, I mean opt out of all that shit. Because it... In, in not confronting your shadow self and not doing the shadow work, your ego is keeping you from the life of your dreams. Your brokenness is keeping you from the loves of your life. Loves, I said, of your life. Because love manifests in more ways than just dicks going into pussies. And in fact, if we honest... That ain't never manifested nothing but chaos, confusion, breeding out of season, poverty, heartbreak, and needing to heal. But I digress. All this love is waiting for you. But you got to choose. You got to choose. Do I want to stay stuck on the hamster wheel going nowhere and getting there fast? Or do I want to confront the hidden aspects of me, the parts of myself that I don't like or that I was taught not to like? So that I can be whole. Opt out of the BS. So you can opt in to your own future. And all this love that's waiting for you.